there's only one true God, which is the Father, and the Son whom you have sent, right? Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So obviously this guy keeps pointing, I'm the way, but here's the destination. I'm the way, here's the destination. And we believe that. As Muslims, we believe that. We believe that Allah is the destination. We believe that all the prophets and messengers, peace be upon us, Abraham, Moses, David, they all said the same thing. I'm the messenger, I'm the way, the destination is God. Uh, that might have been in different languages. So I think he's doing some give da'wah, man. See if you can get close and see if uh, you can hear it. Otherwise, if you falsify this, then you know it's not from God. Right? But very simply put, uh, the very first chapter, which is Surah Al-Fatiha, the opening. So here you have, in the name of God, most gracious, most merciful, all praise is for God alone, Lord of all the worlds, right? If there was multiple gods or if there was someone else that needed praise, then we would be worshiping that. But there's only one God, so you worship that deity worthy of worship. Now, on your journey, it's your job to figure out who that deity is. Is it a banana? Is it a potato? Is it a, you know, something unseen? And so on and so forth. And everything in between, right? So all praise for God, Lord of all the worlds, the world's most compassionate, most merciful. So you have two of the characteristics that he opens and introduces himself at with, which is most compassionate and most merciful. These are the attributes. And he's the master of the day of judgment. So that means that there's gonna be a day of account. So all the injustices that you see in the world, it's saying that if you don't hold yourself to account, that God will hold you to account. They put a bookmark here. Absolutely, bro, yeah, please. And then, um, here it says, you alone we worship and you alone we ask for help. So again, we're only supposed to be submitting to that deity. Now, how you submit, you're gonna find out that out through reading this book. So for example, in Islam, we believe, we believe in five daily prayers that was taught to us by the Prophet, peace be upon him, also in the Quran as well. And then you, it's in this book. It's in this book. Yeah, the prayers are in this book. What up from the prayers? Uh, so you have, um, uh, let me check. Uh, I'll get the chapter for you for sure. Let me just finish this one real quick, and then most definitely I'll get you the references for you because it, it's in different segments of the chapter. Uh, in the Quran. Okay. And then uh, here it says, "You alone we ask for help." So obviously, anything that you're going through your life, you have a direct link with God. It's you don't need an intermediary. You don't go to like a confession booth or anything like that. You don't ask through somebody that's passed away. You just you ask directly from God. Okay. Guide us along the straight path, the path of those whom you have blessed, not the path that you are displeased with. So obviously you're trying to remain upright. You want to be an upright individual. Now you have your own internal morals and a moral compass where when you do something wrong, you feel guilty. But you also have other commandments that are issued upon you that you may not be aware of simply because you haven't read the book, right? So like praying, fasting, giving to charity and so on, right? And then, uh, so, and you're trying to stay away from being somebody that's displeased or those people that are astray. Anybody that's astray is someone that's not upon certainty. So either they were sociologically conditioned through their upbringing or with whatever, you know, friends, family, anything like that. Um, so that's the opening prayer. And then towards the end, which are the shorter chapters, uh, it has the descriptions of uh, what we believe God is. So over here towards the back, and again, no chronological order, you can, you can read it in any which way. So here we have a very short revelation. It's one of the shortest chapters of the Quran, Surah 112, which is ikhlas, which is sincerity. It says, say, O Prophet, he is God, one and indivisible. So one indivisible absolute, the sustainer uh, needed by all. So he's self-sustaining, nothing sustains him. Doesn't need any food, doesn't need any sleep, doesn't have any deficiencies, anything like that. He has never had offspring, nor was he born. So God can't be created. Doesn't have any aunts, uncles, cousins, sisters, brothers, anything like that. There's only just one supreme deity, and there is none comparable to him. Meaning, if you see like hair, if you see like an image of like an old man in the sky, that's not God. Because there's nothing in the likes of him. You cannot con conceive or comprehend him apart from what he tells you. So, one indivisible, self sustaining, all powerful being, doesn't have a power struggle, doesn't have any dependencies. That's the Islamic definition of God. A lot of people, believe it or not, intuitively believe in this. They just have not had the opportunity to read the description. Like, for example, if you were to ask you know, someone just off the street randomly that did believe in God, you'd be like, hey, do you believe in God? They're like, yeah, how many of them are there? There's just one, right? Is he, does he have any deficiencies, any needs, anything like that? No. Does he need? No. Can we see him? No. 
the all-powerful? Yes. You know, they have all that stuff already intrinsically built within them. And now I, along with you, are on the road to discovery of what else has God revealed. So I definitely encourage you to read this. Uh, if you, uh, the other thing that you can do is you should test the messenger. So the, the prophet piece you upon it. And really what you do with that and, and what I did with that is you just say, hey, listen, 1400 years ago, there was a gentleman that claimed that he was a representative, right? There was a message, which is what you see here. We don't believe that the messenger is the author. These are the actual words of God. So what makes this different compared to like the Bible? This isn't an inspiration. This is the direct speech of God. So if you notice, it says towards that first cha uh, the, the chapter all the way in the back right here. So it says, say, O prophet, he is God. So imagine being in a position where God is telling you exactly what to say. He doesn't even leave out the word say. In Arabic, it's kul. So it would say, Allahu ahad. So kul, say, Allahu ahad. Allah is one. So it's not the speech of a man, right? And then there's many other wonderful, miraculous things in there, but this is the basic principalities of Islam. Now test the message and also test the messenger. 1400 years ago, the guy was claiming, hey, I'm receiving revelation. Now either we can look at this gentleman and we could say this guy's completely insane. We could say he's either being deceived, he's a liar, we can explore his motives, or he's telling the truth. And if he is in fact telling the truth, after you do your due diligence, I don't know where you're at on your journey, but I'm happy to answer questions. Uh, after you do your due diligence, if you see that the truth is the truth, all that God asks of you is sincerity. And that's what happened with me. So as an atheist, I was being incredibly insincere. I saw the truth for the truth, but my ego was getting to me and I was refusing to accept it. And it, it took me a long time, dude. It took me nearly two years. But finally, when I accepted it, everything was perfectly clear. I was done fighting myself. So how long have you been in the journey? So I accepted Islam probably about 12, maybe some 13 years ago. But on the journey journey, I know it might sound petty to say, but like all my life, because you have ebbs and flows of faith, right? So like, obviously I, I believe in this now and I don't have any doubts in its uh, truth at all whatsoever. However, you know, one day I may wake up and there's like a topic or something that I want to explore that I don't have knowledge on and it could bring, bring a potential doubt. But Alhamdulillah, which means praise be to God, Islam is the only religion that I've found so far. Every single time that I've brought a doubt up, there is a, a, a perfect, logical, reasonable explanation for everything. Cool. Yeah. Uh, what other religions have you tested out? I've taken a look at Christianity. I've taken a look at Judaism. Uh, I've taken a look at uh, Hinduism, a little bit in the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, I've taken a look at a little bit on Buddhism, just like from lifestyle perspective. Uh, atheism, obviously. So, um, there was a falsification test that I ran and then I tried to approach it categorically. So I would say, okay, look, like categorically speaking, it's either one God or multiple gods. And if I went with, there's multiple gods and anything that says one God, I would have to throw away, right? Because there's like eight, 9,000 religions now and it would take somebody like a billion lifetimes to get through it, right? So rather than doing that, you just categorically approach it and say, okay, there's either one God or many. Okay, I'm gonna explore one God. Anything that says many, I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna table it, and then then you take a look at the, the the things that rise to the top, right? So like for example, Christianity may seem like it rises to the top, but what I couldn't reconcile was the doctrines that they have. So how is it that like here's a funky way of looking at it, and I'll talk to my Christian friends. How is it? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking out. So let's say for example in their doctrine. Uh, to like a doctrine of forgiveness, right? How is it that God sent God to kill God to please God? So like, it's basically you saying, I've got a dollar in my right pocket and I'm just gonna put it in my left and it's all good. That to me didn't make sense. I also am a firm believer in justice and I found it incredibly unjust for someone uh, whom I love very much, right? Like we believe in Jesus as a prophet and we believe he preached monotheism. And I thought it was incredibly unjust for someone like that who was holy, right, sinless, uh, which we believe all the prophets are sinless. How is it that this person can pay the price for me? You know what I mean? And although it sounds very poetic, like when I would read the Bible, especially the book of John, incredibly poetic story. But then I, I started noticing many times he's mentioned as a prophet, you know, many, many times. And I'm like, 
well, how did they have this, you know? So then when I would talk to pastors, and I would talk to my friends, and obviously use the Bible as reference, but this is what I would come to the conclusion of. Imagine a situation where we're, we're homies, right? Yeah. Way back in the day, no major modus of transportation. It would take you three, four, seven months to get to me. You knew the last time that you visited me, my mom was dead. The last time that you came over, you knew for a fact she is she has passed on. Okay, you come back seven months later, and you see her cooking in the kitchen, and you go, "Bro, uh, am I like bewitched right now? How is it that your mom is alive?" And I go, "You're never gonna believe this. There was this guy that came through town by the name of Isa, Jesus, and he was raising the dead." And my mom was one of the people that he raised. Look for yourself. Go talk to her. Go touch her. She'll cook for us right now. Okay? And you go, this is incredible. There's something special about this man. I go, yeah, absolutely. But he said he's here by the will of God. He said he's conducting these miracles by God and all this other stuff. You, you hang out with me, stay for a month, right? Everything's cool. You clearly see you're not bewitched. You, know, you spent the night, you woke up. You're like, I'm not dreaming anymore. You set, set your path back. And you're crossing towns. And you go, you guys are never gonna believe this. There's a guy walking around raising the dead. This guy doesn't know the backstory. He just hears you saying, there's a guy walking, there's a guy walking around raising the dead. This guy goes, this guy must be God or something. See how easy it just changed? So out of passion, out of pure love, and I gave my, my Christian brothers and sisters the benefit of the doubt that it was twisted. It wasn't, it, it could be a possibility that it wasn't like out of a, an egregious, malicious, somebody went in there and said, you know what, I'm going to change this or I'm going to speak differently, right? Because I like to think good of people, I genuinely, I don't like to like, think harm of people. So I can see a situation where something like that transpired and now that went out, okay? But the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible strictly says he of himself can do nothing. But because the story was out and the church was out, they had to create doctrines to fit a narrative. And that's what I couldn't reconcile. I couldn't reconcile co-equal, co-eternal, but different persons. I couldn't reconcile that because there's only one God. Somebody, Jesus had to have had a source. The Holy Spirit had to have had a source, but yet the Father is uncreated. Then I take a look at what does Jesus actually say in the Bible? Go to chapter 17, verse 20. Go to chapter 20, verse 17. You can inverse them. They, they give you an example. Go to Mark 13, 32. You know, it's many a time that attests test. He didn't know the hour. And he's not all knowledgeable. He ate food. He was, de he was dependent on sustenance. He didn't know what, that it was a season of figs. He didn't have knowledge. Then he says, there's only one true God, which is the Father and the Son whom you have sent. Right? Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So obviously this guy keeps pointing, I'm the way, but here's the destination. I'm the way, here's the destination. And we believe that. As Muslims, we believe that. We believe that Allah is the destination. We believe that all the prophets and messengers, peace be upon us, Abraham, Moses, David, they all said the same thing. I'm the messenger, I'm the way, the destination is God. Now uh, that might've been in different languages, right? Like we don't know what language Abraham spoke. They say, oh, it's like a combination of like old, old, old Aramaic with like some Syriac type you know, blend. We don't know what language Adam spoke, right? But in their meaning of what they were saying in their language, they were making the attestation of faith that Muslims attest to, which is la ilaha illallah, there's no God but God. And then right now we have Muhammad al-Rasulullah. So Muhammad is a messenger of God. But back then it was la ilaha illallah of some language, like we don't know what it was. Adam Rasulullah, Isa Rasulullah, Daud Rasulullah. And that's it. It's as simple as that. This is all the prophet messenger appointed for your time. And this is the only one that claims it is for you. So like, why don't I follow the Bible anymore? Because it's not for me. It's for the people of the time that were specific over there, right? He was sent to the house of Lashi of Ezra. Are you Israeli? No. I'm not. Are we there at that time? No. Did it withstand the test of time? Check it. Does it have any additions, omissions, or alterations? Absolutely. First John 5, 7. Most important verse when I was talking to my priest uh, brothers. I said, how is this? Uh, this is an interpolation. It straight up says it in the footnotes. Hey, this was added. Not here. In the Bible. If you were to open it. It says this is an addition. And they had to remove it. So how, why should I 
why should I put even a, a 1% chance on my faith? This book is completely preserved. Chains of narration, authentic chains. You, we, know their, we know the time that they were, uh, you know, they were born, that they died, who they were, what their memory was like. So Islam offers you something that no other faith can. And obviously we're here sharing that message and we're inviting people to Islam. Now, if you already believe in the oneness of God, you're halfway there. If you believe the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is indeed a messenger, you're all the way there. You're a Muslim. You just haven't attested it yet. So once it clicks in your head, right, next is the action of the limbs, which is you you, you have an attestation. You say, that had Allah, Muhammad, Rasulullah, there's no God but God. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is a messenger. And now you begin your journey of solidifying that knowledge. But like I say, when I say it's intrinsic, most people are halfway there. So do you mind me asking like where you're at on your journey? Can you tell me? Okay. Do you come from a Christian background or? Sure do. Okay. So how did you how did you learn about Christianity or tell me something about Christianity that um, you know uh, that really like convinced you to say hey you know what this is for sure it right this is for sure. yeah because once you're upon truth everything else is false not to be insulting it's just it's the reality of it, right like if Christianity is true. Islam is false. Hinduism is false. If Hinduism is true, Islam is false. Christianity is false. We can't have everybody win. We, you can't. And it's it's not to degrade anybody. It's literally, I want to be upon truth. You want to be upon truth. He wants to be upon truth. Why, why would we try to do a disservice to anybody else? Why would we try to do a dis Why would I lie to you? What What's what's my game? Are, are you paying me? Are you... No, nothing. I got no skin in the game other than being held to account with God. So if I'm lying to you right now, I have to be held to account. But I don't want just the moral side of it to be the convincing point. I don't want things just to sound good. And now all of a sudden it's like, yeah, why not? You know? So tell me, what uh, you know, what convinced you of Christianity? Why are you Christian? Why am I Christian? Yeah. That's a good question. Listen up. Yeah. That's deep. That's a, that's a very yeah, man. That's, For uh, real. That's that's tough. Yeah. Um, but the simple answer is because I I've read the scripture. Okay. Um, I've put it to the test. Okay. And it has come. And it hasn't come back to where it's deniable. Great. Great. So what portion did you read and what like stuck out to you the most and what test did you take? What test did I take? Yeah. So like how did you falsify it? So like let me give you let me give you an example. Does the Bible claim to be from God? Does the Bible claim to be from God? Yes. Where? That's a good question. I, I don't have the scriptures. No problem. I, I don't mean to put you on the spot, bro. So like uh, for example, the Bible nowhere claims to be from God. Nowhere. Nowhere claims yeah. to be from God. Mm -hmm. No way. That's an interesting statement. Yeah. Uh, but I, I do have to just agree with that. Okay. Uh, if you can show me a place where it claims to be from God, and I'm happy to give you a copy of the Bible that we have here, then we can explore that further. So, for example, the claim that I understand is that it was an inspiration to multiple authors, and then those authors wrote about basically the biography of Jesus in the New Testament. And then the Old Testament stuff, you by default have to accept because it's the same God. Right? Well, okay. So I, I guess uh, yeah. we're, we're headed in a, a direction of debate. And, uh, no problem. We don't have to do that. Uh, I'm not, I'm not I'm a debater, not, dude. I'm not skilled enough to be able Neither to am I. I'm, I, I, I prefer <laughs> discussion. So, okay, let's backtrack it then. What was the convincing factor? Like, what about Christianity makes you believe that, hey, you know what? I'm upon truth with certainty. The love. Okay, the great. Love, the, uh, the compassion, the forgiveness, the... Great. Uh, great. You know, the example that you said. Great. Great. Uh, you know, if someone was willing to die, uh, 
let's just yeah. say, let's just say this this young individual is in the sure. universe. I'm gonna stand in front of the car before it hits you. Yes. Um, would you be grateful? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So by absolutely, I'm just agreeing. I'm following what with you're saying. I wouldn't be. Oh no, no, I, I disagree with the statement. No, no, no. I, yeah. If you Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I would not. I would not permit it. I would not permit it. Not in the slightest, man. I, I'm, I'm, I'm too soft-hearted for that. And there, you no, know, no. Well, if, please if, carry on. If you kept the car from hitting you and you take the fall for it, I mean. Oh, like if you saved me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Uh, so. I'd be grateful to him. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay, I would 100% so, be grateful to him. So yeah. That will